Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the DNA results of a uh, Narva culture hunter gatherer from Lithuania, from this region right here. Now, in case you don't know about the Narva culture, let me show you what that is. It's a hunter gatherer culture in the um, in the northeast of Europe, and this culture is essentially one of the one of the later surviving cultures of European hunter gatherers. This is also the pitted ware culture, which is in Scandinavia. But Narva culture essentially co coexisted with the Indo-Europeans and the and the farmer societies in Europe. And these Narva culture societies, they were um, very interesting. They were they were practicing hunting and gathering. They also fished. Uh, a big portion of their diet consisted of fish. Um, and these people were very, very European genetically. So this individual, Cryotonus II, uh, it's a male. His, meta his um, mitochondrial lineage, I don't know. We don't, I don't really care about. His uh, Y DNA is I2. It's a very European hunter-gatherer paternal lineage. Uh, in terms of his um, ancestry, his ancestry can be modeled as a mixture of 79.6% Villa Bruna, or like Western hunter-gatherer, basically, 16.2% of Fontava Garatri, or essentially like ancient North Eurasian, and 4.2% Pinarbasi hunter gatherer, or essentially like um, Anatolian hunter gatherer. So, um, in in terms of deeper ancestry, he's mostly a descendant of Western hunter gatherers. He's mostly very European, and he does have a little bit of affinities to ancient North Eurasians, which would be the Fontava Garatri. And he also does have a little bit of affinity. He has a little bit of ancestry from the Anatolian hunter-gatherers from, from Pinarbasi, but mostly he's very Western. Mostly he's very European. And uh, so let's do this. Uh, let, let me show you the Upper Paleolithic map of Europe and explain to you what this um, um, world groups map I don't know, something like this. So, I don't know if I can find like a good map for you guys. This might be a good map. Let's see if it loads. Can I? Yeah, so you see Malta here on the right. That would be like an ancient North Eurasian. And um, Villa Bruna here on the left. This would be. Yeah, actually, it's a perfect map. So, you see Villa Bruna here on the left. You see Malta here on the right. Pretty good map. You see Kotiaskida here, but you you know you don't see uh, Pinar Basi, unfortunately, in, in Anatolia. But uh, essentially, Villa Bruna in Europe. That's that's here in Italy. Italy Villa Bruna, a font of Agaratri and Malta in uh, in Siberia. Essentially, the same thing. They fall in the same cluster. So you get the picture. So he's got 16% of ancestry that falls in roughly the same cluster as Malta boy, like right, right here in Siberia. Um, he's got. Um, seventy-nine point six percent of ancestry falling right, more or less in the same cluster as Villa Bruna right here in Europe, and about about four point two percent of his ancestry falling in the same cluster as Pinar Basi hunter gatherer from Anatolia right here, which unfortunately is not on on this map. It's very different from what a modern Latvian or a Lithuanian would score. A modern Latvian or a Lithuanian would be scoring like forty percent or fifty percent Pinar Basi instead. Uh, so a modern Latvian or Lithuanian is a lot more Anatolian than this individual. This individual is very, very northern, very, very European hunter-gatherer. So let's go ahead and see what he is scoring for Nasha Code calculator results. This individual is very special because he is, I think, the earliest ginger. And let's see what he scores for the Nasha Code calculator. So let's start for the eye color. For the eye color, very, very special result. Because as you can see, his eye color is very light. Uh, the largest group he scores is green eyes. Followed by that is blue eyes with an Amber Center ring. Followed by that is blue eyes. And he probably does not have hazel eyes. Hazel eyes is pretty improbable for him. Uh, darkest brown eyes, very, very unlikely. Brown eyes, also very unlikely. So he most likely has green eyes. Very, very cool. Uh, for hair color, it looks like he's got red hair. That's the largest group he scores. Very, very cool. So this is really the... This is really the earliest ginger that we are seeing. And this is the earliest ginger from the Narva culture. And for skin color, he is also scoring the palest skin. So this is a green-eyed, green-eyed, red-haired ginger. He's got the whole the whole package. Green eyes, red hair, 
Payless skin. He's got the whole, the whole package. And for hair texture, it looks like he's got curly hair as well. Like uh, curly hair, Payless skin, and green eyes. Wow. Well, I mean, he could have blue eyes with an amber center or blue eyes as well, but most likely he's got green eyes. That's the largest group he scores. So it looks like he's got blue eye haplotype 3 and blue eye haplotype 2 and blue eye haplotype 1. And he's also got heterozygous gene type and blue eye haplotype 4 somehow. Very, very interesting. Uh, he has one light color variant in MC1R, but he also has one light color variant in this variation of IRF4, which also contributes to scoring, um, scoring high for ginger. For ginger prediction, very, very, very interesting. Okay, let's go and see his uh, phenotype oracle. That might be quite cool to see. So the closest phenotypes to him is this. Um, very, very cool. Followed by this. Followed by um, this. And for the phenotype mixtures that he's scoring, let's see, the closest phenotype mixtures is 50% that plus 50% that. Followed by 50% nat plus 50% nat. Followed by 50% nat plus 50% nat. Very, very cool phenotype mixtures. Okay. That's quite cool. So yeah, he's definitely very white. This is uh, this is probably the earliest ginger. <laughs> yeah, this is really the earliest ginger. Yeah, the earliest ginger I've seen so far. Pretty cool. Let's see his biomarkers results. What are his predispositions to various traits? When it comes to biomarkers, it looks like he's got predisposition to higher than average levels of vitamin D, higher than average levels of LDL cholesterol, which is unfortunate, uh, below average levels of HDL, which is also kind of not so good, higher than average levels of glucose, higher than average hemoglobin, uh, higher than average blood pressure, unfortunate once again, uh, typical level of iron, typical okay, uh, higher than, av than average level of uh, sex hormone binding globulin, slightly higher than average level of sex uh, of uh, red blood cell. Pretty typical stuff. Nothing too surprising. Let's look at the polygenic risk, risk scores here. It looks like nothing relevant was found for leukemia. It looks like he's got a very high score for vitiligo. It looks like he's got a very high score for myopia. It looks like he's got a high score for primary biliary cirrhosis. It looks like he's got a below average score for stroke. It looks like he's got a high score for male pattern hair loss. Looks like he's got a below average score for atrial fibrillation. Uh, nothing relevant for deep vein thrombosis. A pretty much average score for bipolar type 1. Pretty much average score for schizophrenia. Uh, below average score for type 2 diabetes. A slightly below average score for Alzheimer's. A slightly below average score for multiple sclerosis. Um, pretty typical score for breast cancer. Pretty typical score for testicular cancer. Pretty typical score for celiac disease. Nothing relevant was found for GSS. Uh, typical score for Crohn's, nothing relevant was found for Reifenstein's, and very, very weird score for Parkinson's, but we can't really verify that. So what do we have to... There is nothing really concerning here, to be honest. Um, the, the score for vitiligo is kind of crazy. Scoring this much for vitiligo is kind of really weird for somebody who's a European. Europeans tend to have lower risk for that. So maybe we have to look at the vitiligo panel and see what, um, what risks he has. Maybe he has... Uh, some genotypes in the HLA panel that predispose him to have higher risk for various stuff that has to do with the HLA. We have to look at the HLA panel for sure for this individual uh, because Europeans tend to have lower risk for vitiligo-related issues. Okay, so for uh, let's move on, let's move on to the monogenic traits. Let's let's move on to this part. Looks like he's got. Um, AA and COMT's valmet variation, meaning met met genotype or what a year genotype in COMT, which means uh, less of the COMT enzyme, which means more of the dopamine and uh, increased dopamine levels, advantages in attention and motivation, disadvantages in stress related situations. Uh, so more dopamine, higher dopamine levels, and also uh, less dopamine due to receptor sites. Okay, very European genotype so far. It looks like he's got um, short form 5 HTTLPR, so slightly higher odds of depression. Higher odds of autism. This takes into account not only stuff that's on this panel, but also everything that has to do with autism in the file. Um, it looks like he's got intermediate predisposition to empathy, so pretty much average levels of empathy. Um, for vitiligo, let's see. So he does actually have some risk variance for vitiligo in the HLA gene. Wow, that's definitely very interesting. That's uncommon for Europeans. The Europeans def typically don't have risk variance for vitiligo. For facial morphology panel, he has. Does not have East Asian EDAR. He has this gene type which leads to shorter mid-face length. 
He has a genotype that corresponds to higher odds of protruding nasal bridge, smaller nose size, and um, okay, no micro penis. Uh, mus- mix of muscle types likely more sprinter rather than endurance athlete. He does not have fortic sneeze reflex, and he does not have sh- shovel shaped incisors and not East Asian in ancestry. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, for rare diseases, let's see that. He has this genotype, which is very rare and leads to a 20 times increased risk of ankylosing spondylitis. Definitely very interesting. I don't think I really even remember what that is. So if you remember what that is, that's maybe leave a like, leave a comment. For HLA gene panel. Okay, so for HLA, overall, his genotype is quite good. So he's got a 47% chance of lower odds of autoimmune disease. Overall, his genotype is quite good for HLA gene panel. Uh, most likely, he's got reduced odds of uh, various problems with the HLA gene. So, most likely, he's got a, he's got it pretty good. All right, for for muscular dystrophy myopathy, he's got zero risk variance for that. That's quite good. Uh, for color blindness, no risk variance for color blindness. For FTO gene panel, no fat gene variance. Uh, however, he does have um, homozygous gene type here actually for uh, fat gene variance, which leads to a Modest increase in the risk of obesity, definitely very interesting. Uh, for syncopy, based on two SNPs, he's got below average odds for syncopy. And for bio trades panel, it looks like he's got. Uh, is there anything interesting I can I can talk about here? This gene type which leads to a significant inc- increase in the risk of age-related macular g- degeneration. He's less able to detect uh, beta ionine fl- floral fragrance. And for blood group panel. It looks like he's got blood type A for sure, blood type O for sure, definitely blood type O. Uh, there is no likelihood of any other blood type besides blood type O. Wow. So that's pretty much all there is for this individual. Um, did, I, did I mention, did I forget to cover anything else? Um, let's see. No, not really. Not really. There's nothing else I really forgot to cover. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is. Well, thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, you can download this file in 23andMe format for uh, from link, which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.